Hello and welcome to part two from the East Coast Rep Rap Fest 2022. We couldn't cover everything in one video, so there's more to see. But again, I want to give a huge shout out to Printed Solid for sponsoring this year's excursion. Be sure to check them out in the link in the description. Now let's get to it. So we're here with Coco Press again. Now, we've seen this. We've seen this printer. You had this at Murph. Yep. And it's gotten a makeover. If this is a little bit. Just a little bit. So what are we looking at here? So this is our new printer. It's very roughly based on the V0, but it's completely different. You know, 2020 extrusions, uh, just to be able to hold our pretty heavy extruder here. And we're printing chocolate on it. Um, it's everything about this design is, is better. And we're able to get insane overhangs, print benches um, like we've never been able to print before. So these were all printed on it? These, uh, most of these were on the new one. The benches and stuff were. And print in place gears, um, which is what we're printing right now as well. Oh, that actually works. Yep. And that's chocolate. And it's, and then, you know, all the cool textures that we've always done. Awesome. So yeah. this, this is looking a lot more refined than the original one. Uh, so so what's the big, some of the big key differences? I don't see the big hole in the bed anymore. Yes. So how do you get around loading this? Because you got to load these from the bottom, right? So we have a hinge mechanism on this one. So it hinges to the side. The cartridge goes in. And what's great about this is that the chocolate only touches four parts and all four of those parts can be washed uh, in the sink. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to do this one-handed. That's okay, and then it locks um, into place. And then it locks into place in the back. That is um, awesome. Better temperature uh, measurement on this one. Um, now, I don't know, every part about it is, is new. <laughs> So this is now something you're going to try and bring to market? Yep, so we'll be selling these as uh, DIY kits, similar to the Voron kits, um, okay. hopefully this spring. Uh, and then we'll also be selling them fully assembled later on. That's more for businesses, chocolate shops, and that'll come with some one-on-one -on -one training to teach chocolate shops how to 3D print stuff. Awesome. Yeah. So it, it's... That's looking shiny. And back here, is this revision one of the This chocolate? is the original printer. Um, some of this was redone a few years later, but with some hand-soldered circuits that I made. I used to do crazy stuff to try to print with pneumatics. Um, cooling, six Peltiers on the side with air tubes. So, so the Cocoa Press has had a bit of a glow up over the years. It's, this, is, this is version 8. The new one is, is the 8th chocolate printer that I've built here. Awesome. Uh, I, yeah. I honestly can't wait to build one. I, my wife would thoroughly enjoy that. So. And it's just some fun things about it. There's some simplifications from the Z V0. Um, you know, we don't use a heated bed, and so we're able to uh, basically screw right into the bed here uh, because we won't melt. And yep. so there's there's fun things like that on this printer. And it does have realized. bed leveling too. It does, it have, does bed have bed leveling. leveling. <laughs> and awesome. so yeah, we're aiming for a $14.99 price for the kit. We'll see how it comes out in the spring. Um, and that includes all the custom chocolate extrusion components as well. Yep. Okay. Yep. That'll be for the entire thing. Awesome. Yeah. Can't wait. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we are at Railcore Labs, and this is a Railcore Mini, but compared to the stock one, this is uh, a little ballin'. So, what have you done to this thing? All right. So I, I guess I started this crazy project like right when they released it, which is probably about eight months ago. So I'm the first community member to uh, build one of the Railcore Minis, and I kind of took it in a different direction. Um, I really wanted this to be like a long-term experimental platform for me where I wasn't limited uh, and I could, you know, just make fast changes. If I wanted to go to NEMA 23s or servos or, um, you know, I'm going to put uh, encoders on this as, uh, when I get back from Earth. Um, and so I've got three different power supplies on the back, uh, you know, to kind of start things off. Um, I wanted to go all DIN rail which again, you know, allows me to kind of switch things out very quickly. Yeah, I like, um, I love DIN rail. So I've got, you know, 480 watts of 24 volts, same with 48 volts, and uh, then I've got 120 watts for 12 volts. And the reason I've got the 12 volts on here is I've got a, a custom loop, and that's for cooling uh, the hot end. So I'm running a, a slice uh, Magnum Plus liquid, uh, and that gets me, you know, between 70 and 100 uh, cubic millimeters per second of flow. Then, of course, if you're running that, you got to cool it. So I've got a temporary solution that I've designed for uh, for Earth, 
but eventually I'm going to have three of these uh, Delta three-phase fans inside of the build volume. It'll be fully enclosed. Okay, so you are doing curtain air cooling. Exactly. And uh, so this is, I've got a sheet here, and eventually I'm going to have a duct that wraps around on all three sides uh, so I can get, you know, good overhangs. Now for Parkle, is that bird air you're running? or I've got a bird air as well. So okay. that, you know, kind of provides my high pressure cooling right at the nozzle. Um, in addition to my sheet cooling. I which, like the little vibration dampener you built for it there. Yeah, thank you. Um, I've, I've had a couple of people interested in that, um, so I wasn't planning on releasing it, uh, but I, I guess I'm going to go ahead and release it. That's then, something I did a couple of years ago for another printer, and I just needed to get something on there fast. But yeah, again, it's den rail mounted, and so it's kind of shock mounted to the den rail, and it's also in this kind of um, this cage that's kind of inspired by like a microphone. Yeah, like, I was going to say it looks like a mic. Holder. Yeah. And then for our controller hardware, is this all Duet? It's all Duet, yeah. Uh, so I'm running a 6HC, and um, eventually I'm going to get more of these 1HCL boards, and these allow me to run uh, 48 volts and also encoders, so you can do closed loop eventually. Awesome. Um, and so it's all CAN bus, um, and that's where my 48 volt power supply comes in, so it's okay. supplying these here. So these motors are running at 48 volt right now? Yes. Uh, the Z is currently running at 24 volts, but I'm going to put those on 48 as well. Okay. Um, and all the machine looks like Mandela Rose works for a lot of this hardware? That and 713 Maker. Okay. Um, I've also polished all these parts by hand. I was going to say, this is this is looking mighty shiny. <laughs> and then uh, on, on the X carriage plate specifically, uh, because of the rail tolerances and because that's a critical interface, to get those running as smooth as possible so I can hit higher accelerations, um, I've lapped those flat to within three micron. Okay. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I just kind of spent a lot of time, you know, getting everything nice and square and trammed in well. And for the bed, we have your mic six with a heater pad under it, okay. Exactly, and, and, and that's uh, one of Wade's parts as well. Uh, it's a magnetic bed, and then uh, Subtle Designs has cut the, uh, the plate here, and I'm using Wham Bam Pex right now. That's um, great. And, and what screen here are you running? Uh, so this is uh, from Seed Studio. Uh, this is the uh, re-terminal. And then it's got the E10-1 uh, E10 on the back. It's basically an industrial pie. It's got a CM4 inside. Um, and so that just lets me run, uh, you know, uh, Duet Web Control. Oh, awesome. Yeah, because um, I've, I've come from a background in, in a mold shop. So a lot of the hardware that I'm seeing on this little machine is something I would see on, like, a full-size, proper CNC machine. And it's... It's awesome to see. So what speeds are you getting out of this little beast? Uh, so I, I haven't gotten to push it. Uh, and at Earth, you know, I'm on a card table here. Yeah. Um, so, but I've tested it when I was on the uh, Slice Conduct uh, Magnum Plus. Uh, before I did water cooling, I was getting 1.5 meters per second for travels. Uh, and I was getting 50 KXL. Um, I haven't pushed it past that. Here at Earth, I've been running uh, one meter per second for travels. And uh, I was running 50k excels yesterday. I've dropped it to 25k because I was just shaking the poor table apart. Yeah, these tables aren't too structurally sound with uh, some of these machines on them. <laughs> but uh, you know, we didn't have room here at Earth. But I've also got a custom stand that I built uh, for it, uh, basically like a trapezoidal uh, knockdown uh, birch uh, Baltic birch uh, plywood stand, and it's got a tapered fitting for uh, the top of the stand that sits in it. And so it basically, you know, anytime this thing kicks, it basically locks the table in even more. Awesome. Um, and so that's where this marble slab is from. Uh, and it sits on top of some uh, cork Buna N isolators. And so that's kind of a tune mass damper. So that allows it to dissipate a lot of the energy from, you know, stopping really fast or, or changing directions. Yeah, this seems like a very well thought out Absolutely overkill, and I love it machine. <laughs> yes, so. that was pretty much the concept. Actually, another cool feature on here, uh, this is uh, from 713 Maker as well. He's got these um, lead screw couplers. Uh, it's basically like a, like like a kinematic. kinematic mount. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say that's kinematic. And there. so if you've got any wobble, or yeah, in my case, you know, I had changed out the lead screws right before Earth because I had this one was kind of wobbling a little bit. It turns out it was actually my coupler, and I haven't had a chance to get a new coupler. Um, but yeah, that'll basically take out any lateral motion. Oh, that's nice. Cool. Yeah, congrats on the build. Very clean. All right, thanks. Cheers. There we go. Okay. Hey, I'm Rob Mink. This is the Baby Belt. 
Um, it's a cheap little $100 open source 3D printer that's mostly 3D printed. Um, it's good for getting kids started, educational stuff. It can print um, accurate dimensional parts too, of course. Uh, but it's, uh, it's open source, you can get as a kit too. Um, the belts are made out of uh, cotton fabric that you can get, just standard cotton fabric. It's a laminate of the fabric and construction paper and carpet tape. Okay. Easy to make, easy to get. Awesome. Yeah. And it's printing PLA? Printing PLA, but it can do TPU as well as PETG. Awesome. Cool. And they can find it here on your GitHub. And if they want a kit, where can they find that? They can get the kit at printseps.com. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much.